Hi and welcome to the Sound of Science. Today I want to speak about a paper published uh, recently in the journal Nature and it describes a novel role for microglial cells in the brain. So excitatory neurons typically excite other neurons with uh, the neurotransmitter glutamate and they also excite inhibitor neurons which in turn um, uh, release uh, GABA as an inhibitor neurotransmitter to inhibit the activity of neurons. Uh, recently it was shown that astrocytes, uh, another cell type in the brain that actually comprises half of the cells in the brain, can also release glutamate and affect uh, neuronal excitability. However, it, would, it wasn't known whether other uh, cell types such as microglial cells uh, are participating in this process, or in other words, do they affect excitability of uh, neurons in the brain tissue. And this is what uh, this research group was uh, uh, aiming to find out. And so what do microglial cells do? Uh, here you can see an image of uh, microglial cells. You can see the different uh, processes of these cells, highly ramified cells. And they in, are involved in uh, synapse pruning, which is the um, uh, digestion of uh, synapses in the brain. They are very known to respond to uh, pathogens and they are also participate in tissue maintenance. And so, uh, microglial cells express uh, a receptor called CSF1 receptor, the ligand of which is CSF1. And when the investigators in this uh, research um, antagonized this receptor using a pharmacological compound, they were able to ablate uh, most of the microglial cells uh, in the injected region of the brain, um, but they observed no uh, seizure activity. Uh, in addition, they also uh, treated mice with low levels of kainic acid, which is an agonist for uh, AMPA receptors, which are, are receptors uh, for glutamate. Uh, they also treated the, the mice with picrotoxin, which is an inhibitor of um, uh, inhibitor in neurons. Um, so under these conditions they also saw no seizure activity. However, when they combined uh, treatment of the mice with uh, either kinic acid or picrotoxin with uh, microglial cell ablation, they saw that there is an increase in seizure activity, which, is that, which has suggested to them um, that uh, microglial cells are involved in uh, neuronal excitability and when you get uh, rid of them uh, there is no um, in control of that process. So in order to understand the mechanism they looked at the synapses and specifically how microglial cells interact with these synapses and here you can see um, a scheme of a synapse. This is the pre-synaptic um, portion, this is the postsynaptic portion and so in addition to releasing neurotransmitters such as glutamate uh, from the presynaptic portion, there is also a release of ATP. Uh, ATP has many roles, of course, but in the context of this uh, study, ATP uh, acts as an attractant for microglial cells. So microglial cells are attracted to synapses of neurons that uh, are active. And so what happens um, to that ATP? Um, CD39 is an enzyme expressed on microglial cells that can metabolize ATP into ADP and later on into AMP. Uh, and ADP is known to activate a receptor that is exclusively expressed on microglial cells called the P2Y12 receptor. And when the researchers inhibited this receptor on the microglia, they were able to um, prevent the inhibitor effect of microglial cells on uh, neurons. So AMP can further be metabolized to adenosine by uh, CD73, another enzyme that isn't exclusively expressed on microglia, it's also expressed on other cells such as astrocytes. Now when the researchers inhibited uh, either CD39 or CD73, they were able to uh, once again prevent the inhibitor effect of microglial cells on neurons which suggested to, the, to them that adenosine is the culprit or the most important factor to mediate this effect. Now it is not new that adenosine uh, is involved in uh, neuronal excitability or in uh, prevention of neuronal excitability 
Uh, we know uh, that for a long time that uh, during the day the levels of tenosin accumulate in our brain and uh, during sleep these levels go down and enable subsequent uh, neuronal plasticity effects and memory consolidation to occur. So how does adenosine uh, do these effects? Um, it has many uh, mechanisms of action but with relevance to this uh, topic, adenosine activates A1 receptors in neurons which causes the levels of cyclic AMP to go down. Now cyclic AMP is a very important um, factor in uh, neuronal plasticity and um, elevate levels of cyclic AMP, promote uh, uh, neuronal plasticity and vice versa. Interestingly, uh, coffee uh, contains large amounts of caffeine which is known to affect the uh, mechanism of action of adenosine and it prevents adenosine from activating A1 receptors which enables us to have high levels of cyclic AMP uh, when we drink coffee. So um, what researchers found in this uh, uh, study was uh, they revealed a novel function for microglial cells which is inhibition um, or toning down uh, of neuronal excitability adding up to the um, a complete picture of how uh, the neuronal network functions. Now this mechanism could have some implications to pathologies such as uh, epilepsy and um, this uh, remains to be shown. Uh, in addition, we also don't know what are the mechanisms of uh, uh, ATP release from uh, synapses, that same ATP that attracts uh, microglia, so this is another open question. And also, uh, we don't know whether adenosine can uh, activate additional receptors, such as the A2 receptors uh, expressed on uh, neurons. Uh, lastly, we don't know whether uh, circadian rhythm, which uh, affects uh, our gene expression in the cells in the body, but particularly uh, in our interest in the brain, between the day and the night. So it will be interesting to see whether subsequent research uh, will um, uh, decipher whether uh, a circadian rhythm is also involved in this process. So that will be all for today. See you on the next paper.